The Morning Show in Melbourne is proudly brought to you by L'Oreal Paris. Because you're worth it. Well, when you have got so many choices in front of you for the new season, it's easy to go overboard shopping for clothes. And it uh, seems like these that have people praying for their next uh, paycheck. Have a look. Take off the tie. Give it the tie. The tie. He really wants to do this. He tie. would go oh, crazy with the tie. tie. Really Who ordered pizza? Pretty woman, give your smile. Pretty woman, give smile to me. Pretty woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty woman, look my way. Pretty woman, say you'll stay. No, you. thank you. I'm sorry. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. I have to go shopping now. So what do you do if your shopping sprees become an addiction? Just off the tram on her way back from Chapel Street where she spent the morning shopping, our resident psychologist Jo Lamble joins us. I wish. <laughs> where do you draw the, draw, draw the line between a little uh, pick-me-up and a real problem with shopping? A lot of people like to shop and a lot of us shop just to feel better, that good old retail therapy, sure. But shopping addiction is real and it is serious. The signs that you might have a shopping addiction is that you might really obsess over shopping, think about it all the time. The shopping itself is quite compulsive, it feels uncontrollable. If you don't shop, you won't feel good. They actually shop to escape feelings of depression or boredom or loneliness. And they also get this real euphoria when they shop, that high, like a drug taker. And the important thing is that they're actually getting the high while they're shopping, while they're spending, not wearing that great outfit once they get home. It's all worn off then. You know, so it is quite different. How do people become addicted, Joan? How does it all you know, unravel? Yeah, it's quite easy because what happens is they start with some sort of negative emotion. They might just feel empty or inadequate or lonely. And then they think, oh, look, if only I had that big screen TV or that fabulous outfit and look like a supermodel, then maybe I'd feel better. So they go and buy it. That does give them a high and a buzz and people start remarking, wow, great TV. So they feel really important. They feel really good until that credit card statement comes in and then they come crashing down and feel useless and that's where they start again, so the cycle keeps going. So they've got to attack those feelings of inadequacy. I guess we don't hear about it as much as other addictions, cigarettes and drugs and yeah, alcohol, yeah. but can it become that serious? Yeah, because of that, th those two things I'm talking about, like cigarettes and alcohol and gambling, it's actually to escape a negative feeling, so that gets rid of that negative feeling, plus what's really important is the high they get. Anything that gives us a high like that is addictive, so they keep going in search of that high. So it is quite, actually quite, even though it's not, you know, physiological, it is quite, addictive. Okay. Now men would say that this is only a woman's problem. I'm kind of guessing maybe not. Well, especially when I mention those big screen TVs. <laughs> because <laughs> certainly technology is an area for men. But we had that brave guy come on the counselling couch last yeah, year, remember? Yeah, and he was uh, certainly a male shopping addict, mm. and he's not alone. I would say there's certainly more women, but yeah, no, it does happen to men. Okay, how do we go about dealing with it? It's conquering that urge in the first instance, yeah? Yeah, well firstly you need to, as I said, address the feelings of inadequacy. If you're lonely and Need to address that. If you're depressed, you need to address that. But in the meantime, there's some tips that um, we can pull up. That you know, the first one is just to be honest about how much you're spending. It's a great idea to keep a record to see where your money is actually going. Only buy and then what you can afford. Cancel your credit cards. It's such a bad idea to have all these credit cards, store you know, store cards from all these different shops. Tell someone who cares about you. Support is so important. If you admit you've got a problem to a friend, even that la second last tip, take that friend shopping with you. So they can say, do you really need that? Or, you know, that's not a good idea. Manage your stress because that can 
tip off um, you know, shopping addiction, so make sure you are exercising, eating well, it all is linked. And if it really gets out of hand, you can arrange a bill paying service so somebody else is taking care of that and putting a stop on your credit card and it will actually not allow you to buy those things. But hopefully it wouldn't get to that. But I must stress, as I said before, you've got to get to the feelings behind it. You know, yes. you're not going to feel better about yourself inside just by spending a lot of money. Hello, Joe. Some really good advice there. Thank you for that. Thanks, Joe. I'll see you soon. We're back with more of the morning shows straight after this.